This is the San Francisco 49ers report. Chase Sr. here with you. And coming up, will the Niners make a trade? Will they make some changes to their roster? 4-4 four and four going into the bye week. Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the other side of that bye. But they don't play this upcoming week. And the November 5th NFL trade deadline is looming, and it's coming up next Tuesday. So San Francisco is going to have to survey this roster, canvas it, and determine whether or not they want to either buy, sell, or stand put at this deadline. So we're going to dive into the latest San Francisco 49ers trade rumors as we approach that aforementioned deadline. But first, I've had Seahawks fans reach out to me. Our Seahawks host has been bothering me all day long saying, hey, Chase, I saw that you're closing in on 148,000 subscribers, you're not going to get there. We're 470 people away. You know what I said? Yeah, we're going to get there. And we might get there with this video alone. So if you want Niners coverage every single day, lock us in, hit that sub button, and shut the Seahawks fans up. By the way, Seattle, they had defenders beefing, pushing one another on that sideline after getting embarrassed by the Buffalo Bills. He'd love to see it. So here's what Ian Rappaport had to say about the status of this football team pertaining to if they will make a trade or not. Quote, I'm not so sure they make a trade. Yes, obviously, they are going to explore, but the 49ers really like the receivers they have on their roster. This may be a situation where the 49ers stick with what's already in their locker room. As for what general manager John Lynch said, we think that with Jawan Jennings, Debo Samuel, Ricky Pearsall, Jacob Cowing, Chris Conley, and Ronnie Bell, we've got enough. We'll see. I think our track record has shown that we're always going to field calls. We're always going to make calls, see what's out there. If we can improve our team, we will. The 49ers are one of the more aggressive organizations in the National Football League. And John Lynch is right. Their track record tells a story. They've been aggressive with retaining and paying their own players. They have been aggressive in building up their football team, whether it be moving up in the draft, signing players in free agency, making trades, and making in-season trades. Last few years, they've made pretty impactful moves at the NFL trade deadline, whether it be Emmanuel Sanders back in 2019, whether it be Jordan Willis a few years ago, Charles Amenihu, and the last two years, Christian McCaffrey, and Chase Young. Those are pretty sizable moves for San Francisco. And so John Lynch is always working the phones, and this is why I'm a fan of his, because he's never content, and he's always willing to listen. He's always willing to keep his eyes and his ears out to make a move. Now, with the 49ers make a move at wide receiver, I wouldn't be shocked, but I'm not sure that's the position that the Niners are going to target. Because I'm alongside John Lynch when he says that he likes the wide receiver group. So do I. We saw it on Sunday Night Football. We've seen it this year. That's why it was a little bit confusing that the Niners signed Brandon Ayuk to the deal that they did because they have Debo Samuel. They re-signed Jawan Jennings. They drafted Ricky Pearsall as well as Jacob Cowing. You gave an extension to Christian McCaffrey on offense. You have George Kittle. And so it was more of a luxury to retain Brennan Ayuk, but now that you lost him, it's next man up. Everybody has to elevate up a roster spot, so to speak, as far as climbing the depth chart, but it's still a pretty good unit. Debo Samuel had a really good game. Ricky Pearsall, 39-yard end around, making plays in the pass game, a big third down conversion on that diving catch from Brock Purdy. Jacob Cowling against the Chiefs two weeks ago, stutter go, long ball, he could take the top off of the defense, that's a weapon. I think that he, like Pearsall, can be used as a gadget guy on gadget plays, end arounds, reverses. The little bubble screen that he caught against Kansas City, he had some short area quickness, a little bit of wiggle to get free and pick up some yards. And Jawan Jennings, I think that with him elevating and him getting more opportunities and Kyle Shanahan saying on Monday he expects to have Jawan Jennings back after the bye, that he can put up good numbers because – We've seen him do that. Chris Conley, special teamer. Ronnie Bell, drop issues, more of a special teamer. But I think San Francisco likes their wide receiver room. I do too. Now, if they do make a trade for a wide receiver, I think it could be for a depth piece. A player like Kendrick Bourne, who's a veteran, who you trust. You don't necessarily need a number one. But you have a vet who knows the system, knows the offense, has played well for this team, 
and you bring in a familiar face because you know what you're getting, and it looks like he's healthy coming off that torn ACL as he's played for about the last month or so. This is where it starts to get interesting, though, and this is a report from Diana Rossini over the weekend, and I talked about this in a YouTube short, just wanted to touch on it as far as long form, and not everybody saw that, and some people don't know what's going down, but Rossini reported this, quote, I've been told to keep an eye on the Patriots, who will listen to any proposal with run-stuffing interior defensive lineman Davon Godchow and ex-Niners wide receiver Kendrick Bourne among the possible targets. They actually made a trade today in trading an outside linebacker and edge rusher to the Kansas City Chiefs in Josh Uche. Two other San Francisco players, defensive tackles DeForest Buckner, Rusini continued by saying, and DJ Jones of the Denver Broncos, have been discussed internally by team decision makers, but I don't get the sense that Indy or Denver are open to moving either player. Why could that be? Well, Indy lost to the Houston Texans. They have quarterback questions. Is Anthony Richardson the guy? Are they going to go with Joe Flacco? We saw something that we haven't seen, maybe ever, where a starting quarterback who was 2 of 15 in the first half checked himself out of the ball game because he said that he was tired and winded. What? Yeah, Anthony Richardson checked himself out of the ball game and said, I did that because I was tired. Wild. And at Florida, he completed less than 55% of his passes, and people are going to act surprised when he can't hit the side of a house because of his lack of accuracy at the NFL level. Stop buying into these athletic traits. Anyway, and rant. Quarterback position, way more nuanced than that. But if they go with Joe Flacco, I think it gives Indianapolis more of a chance to win, to compete in the AFC South. And so the Colts are in it. They have a good roster, a good coach in Shane Steichen, they might not move a really good player into Forrest Buckner. And then the Denver Broncos, they've benefited from a weak schedule. They're 5-3. and three. And so are they going to sell and trade away a player like DJ Jones, who is on an expiring deal? Buckner Jones would help this Niners team. Buckner, against the pass, against the run, still a terrific Pro Bowl level player, even though he's 30 years old. And the Niners have missed DJ Jones as a run stuffing defensive tackle who can give you some TFLs and he can slip by some interior offensive linemen and pressure the quarterback as well. But the fact that Rusini has said that team decision makers are looking at those players, important to pass along. So if the Niners make a move at the deadline, I don't think it's going to be offense, nor do I think it needs to be offense outside of like a Backup wide receiver. I think it needs to be on the defensive side of the football because there they've had scheme issues, coaching issues, and a lack of depth really hurt them, especially along the defensive line. DeForest Buckner, we know he's a fantastic player. The Niners should have never gotten rid of him. First team All-Pro a few years ago, second team All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowler. He's 30 years old, still playing at a really high level, but because the Colts are in contention, I'm just not sure they're going to move him because it doesn't make sense from a business standpoint. DJ Jones, expiring deal, run stuffer, but with the Broncos being where they are, Sean Payton might want to really get into the playoffs to give his young quarterback, Bo Nix, some playoff experience, which is important for him in his maturation and his growth process. Other defensive linemen to keep an eye out for. Titans are bad. Could they trade away Jeffrey Simmons, one of the top defensive tackles in the game, it's been that way over the last few years. He's in that class with Chris Jones and Dexter Lawrence. Fantastic player. Costs a lot, but he's really good. Calais Campbell, an older player who could play defensive end, defensive tackle. He's 6'8". He's a bull. He's in his late 30s, but he could still play too at a pretty good level. And Jadavion Clowney as a depth edge rusher as well. That is a player to look out for for San Francisco as we close in on that deadline. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because if the Niners make a move, you know I'm going to talk about it. We appreciate you for watching. We'll catch you next time. See ya.